Welcome to my channel. I thought I would try and share my efforts to build a vertical head mount for a Kearney and Trekker 2HL universal horizontal mill. Here are a couple of photos of the finished product mounted on the mill with the uh, Kent vertical head that I'm using. Here's a clip of the mill at work. I replaced a uh, Van Norman number 12 with this Kernian Trekker, but missed the ability to switch between the vertical and the horizontal modes for the different kinds of work. In addition, the Van Norman didn't have a quill feed, so there was a lot of cranking of the knee to try and drill holes and do other work like that. And I thought the Bridgeport style head might be a little more convenient for the work that I do. Here I'm cutting down some stock to build the T-nuts that'll go in the mount. Here are some photos of a commercially available mount to mount the uh, vertical head on the overarm bars of the horizontal mill. The uh, problem with this is you, it only has side-to-side -side motion without the ability to nod the head forward back. So here's the mill back working on the T-nuts. Um, as you can hear from the audio, the arbor that I'm using is not perfectly straight. It's one I got with the machine, and I'll uh, see if I can address that a little later on in this series of videos with a little bit better arbor. The other feature of the Kearney and Trekker that really appealed to me was the uh, power feeds in X, Y, and Z. And they're geared feeds instead of an electric, uh, electric motor drive. In addition, there's rapid traverse features in the X, Y, and Z axes. Mr. Crispin had mentioned a while ago that he was considering building a mount similar to this, so I thought I'd post my results and see what uh, people thought. Here I'm mounting up the blank that the, will hold the head and allow it to pivot from side to side in my lathe. I've faced off and turned down one side, just flipping it over. To do the other side, um, there's a small register that I'll turn into the blade to fit the hole at the back of the vertical head. Um, the, my lathe's a 1943 Hendy uh, 16 by 30. It'll actually swing about 18 and a half inches. Most of the material I used in this build is just mystery material I got at the local steel supplier just off cuts and scraps or uh, the freight damage store occasionally has some interesting stuff but usually not much uh, identification on what it is but uh, I figured for what we were doing it would work just fine. I've had the lathe for about the last eight or nine years um, and I've got a lot of use out of it. Um, I'd never even seen a lathe operate in person before I bought this one off of eBay and Spent about a year getting it up and running with the help from uh, a lot of folks on the Practical Machinist Forum. Guys like John Oder and uh, James McDermott really made it possible for me to get this thing running again. But uh, it's been a lot of fun to have and operate and uh, read a lot of books and watched a lot of YouTube videos. You know who all the usual suspects are. Keith Benner is the first one I found and then Tom Lipton and Adam Booth and the various guys have been my mentors. I don't have anyone local that I've interact with so it's all pretty much been through books and YouTube videos uh, but I've really enjoyed the effort and I'm sure glad that that YouTube community community is available. One of the reasons I wanted to post this video is to I guess to give back to show what uh, can be accomplished with the uh, all the information that's available out there that, that so many people have posted for free and uh, it's just kind of like have, have being able to attend school for those of us who are unable to or too old to have to work real jobs and support families. It gives us a chance to learn and, and uh, pursue a, the hobby that, well, it's a hobby for me, but I do use some of my, have been able to use some of it for work. And here we'll get this blank faced off and ready to start putting the grooves for the T-slots in. Um, 
Gary Storick, I'll put a link to his channel, uh, he had posted a video a while back of adapting the, uh, getting a slaughter head mounted onto a mill and had to build an adapter and uh, his, uh, his information he put out was really useful, helpful for me to see someone do it. I kind of had to figure out uh, how to make it work, but we got it done and uh, didn't break too many tools in the process. I did experiment quite a bit with different uh, inserts on this. Part of the problem is this uh, lathe this swings a real low speed, top speed's 478 RPM, and I don't think the uh, carbide tooling is set up for that those kinds of speeds, but make it work most of the time. Here you can see the register that will fit into the back of the vertical head. I'm just trying to line up the grooving bit and get it mounted square to the work. I experimented a little bit with the grooving, the grind on the grooving bit to get it to uh, cut well. Um, I used a little narrower bit when I on some of the T-slots I cut later for the uh, nod part of the mount and uh, it seemed to work a little better than trying to hog it all out in a in a real with a real, real wide tool like I'm doing here. Um, this worked okay it just was uh, a little more a little more nerve-wracking than using a little bit narrower bit and taking several cuts. And here you can see I'm getting ready to start trying to plow out a Roof, if I remember right, it was about 500 thousandths deep, uh, just plunging in. Um, read up a little bit on trepanning and some of those other things that I should have known about before I started tackling this, but here we'll just kind of skip through and fast forward some of this, but it was uh, took a little longer than it shows up on the video. Be nice if the uh, whole effort could go this quickly. Um, just kind of fast forwarding through the whole grooving process. Um, the, uh, the tool cut fairly well. Like I said, I had to play with it a little bit, but uh, it didn't uh, didn't seem to give too much chatter um, and cut okay. So I was going down. Now that I've tried to put together a video, I have a lot more respect for those who do it on a regular basis. It's a lot more work than the machining part, I think, and uh, takes a lot more time and a lot more time with computers than I'm uh, willing to put in. I'm not quite sure how they get those put out all the time. And, uh, you know, weekly, some more than one a week. It's amazing. The width of the groove ended up being about, I needed about 600 thousandths. So there was some side to side as the, the, the tool was a little under a half inch or 500 thousandths. So I did kind of work it side to side, which when I used the smaller, skinnier tool later, that seemed to work a lot better, actually. Here I've just got the dial indicator that I hooked onto my carriage stop that I used to keep track of the uh, depth of the uh, groove to make sure we get, the, get it to the proper depth. Now's where things got a little more interesting. This is the uh, tool that I've ground to uh, try and reach in and cut the T-slot. Uh, they ended up being about 200 thousandths going each direction out of the groove for the T-nuts to sit in. It's actually a it was partially ground, pre-ground. I bought it with a lot of tooling I got on eBay and uh, but had to modify it a bit to it to fit this purpose, but it uh, seemed to work quite well. Just again, setting the, getting the tool post squared up to the work, uh, so I'd go in square. I probably saw the one, two, three block method on somebody's channel at one point. I don't remember 
when or where I saw that, but it does work well for setting up, a, squaring up the tool post for parting, or in this case, doing some inside grooving, trying to get the tool onto, onto center height, with the, just from the marks from the facing. You can sometimes use those to help get things the right center height. The T-slot groove ended up a little wider than the tip of the tool. So again, I'm just setting the dial indicator on the carriage stop to so I can measure how far out I need to come to get the proper width of that uh, internal groove. As you can imagine, there was a lot of uh, clearing of chips that didn't want to clear themselves out of the groove very readily, so I had to stop a fair bit and, and clean the chips out to keep things cleared up. The grooving process wasn't all that exciting, so we'll uh, rush through it and uh, skip over to the uh, groove on the other the inside which took me a minute to think about but once I thought of it, how to get through that it was a pretty simple solution So here I just move the tool to the back side of the part and switched it into reverse and did it the same. That way my uh, depth stuff on the carriage and everything remained the same so I was able to get the same depths on both sides of the groove. Um, this lathe has a, a long taper nose on the spindle so unthreading a check is, chuck isn't a problem as it's keyed on. To the long taper. Um, it worked really well in reverse. I think this is probably the first time I've run it in reverse while doing any real work on it. So it seemed to work real well. And uh, like I said, I was able to maintain the settings for the groove width down inside.
There's the finished part. Um, next step is to uh, cut a opening in so the peanuts can be slid into the T-slots and uh, have access to that T-slot that's now been cut in there. And uh, that'll probably be the next video. Just uh, taking a lot more time to edit this and put it together than I thought. I don't know if I would have tackled it if I'd known how much work it was going to be. And again, I uh, have a greater appreciation for those who do this on a regular basis. Very grateful for their efforts. Hope they keep up the good work and uh, we'll get another video posted here in a day or two with uh, we'll move on and see if we can get this all put together. Again, thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed it.